Hello everybody, welcome to our channel as for the education point. As you know, uh, I have been teaching you principles of programming using C language. Okay, as per schedule, today is our fifth lecture on controlled structures in C. Before um, going into this lecture details, I want to inform you that after this particular thing is over, I will conduct one practical class for you. Okay, and Whatever we will be covering in these five lectures will be covered in those one or two practical classes. So please be sincere and uh, please uh, like and subscribe to our video to get the latest updates. Let's start today's lecture that is control structures in C. So what are control structures? Let me write it down for you. Control structures are program statements which controls the functionality of a variable or a specific block of code. So what is a control structure? Control structures are program statements which control the functionality of a variable or a specific block of code. Now in C, we have different kinds of control structures and I will be explaining them to you step by step. Let me have this one. The control structures in C programming language are if else statement. This is a conditional statement. I will explain in this case, conditional statement. Okay, this is the first one. The if else statement or the conditional statement. Now, what happens? Consider the uh, real time problem and the flowchart for the if else statement. When we encounter something like this, that uh, we have to take a decision. is A greater than B, okay? This is the decision which we want to take, whether A greater than B. Now, each decision is associated with two things. Either the decision is taken to be true or the decision is taken to be false. Now, if is A greater than B is true, that means if it is true, then what I will write? I will write A is larger and now if this particular thing is false then definitely I will write B is larger that means first I am taking this condition ok I am taking a decision but since I am taking this decision and based on the condition that whether A greater than B or B greater than A, our output is being printed. That is why these kind of statements are called if-else statements. Now remember that there can be nested if-else statements. That is, if I want to check more than one conditions, I can always uh, declare one if statement within an if statement that will be called as the nested if statement. Okay, so if else does not mean that there can be a single if, there can be multiple ifs, that is, there can be an if condition within an if condition. But remember that in each case, each if must be associated with one else, and be careful about the braces which you put because when you close one if conditional statement, then you must close the braces. 
Then for the second case, you must again close the process. Otherwise, there will be an open loop within the program and your program will not run. That you can understand during the practicals. Now, this is how if else statement works. So, if I write a code to demonstrate if else, it will be very simple like this. Suppose I want to check whether a number is in or off, then along with the associated code, I will be writing only the if else section of the code. If number modulo 2 is equal to equal to 0, then print the number is event. Why? Because you know that because you know that whenever a modulo 2 division okay whenever a modulo 2 division yields 0 that means the number is even. Okay. The number Percentage. Okay. Now, what if that number modulo 2 is not equal to 0, then print the number percentage D is out. Comma. Now, if my number is 5, then what will be the output? Now, if the number is set to 5, then suppose each number equal to 5. Okay? Now, if number modulo 2 equal to equal to 0, this condition is true or false? Because 5 modulo 2 is not 0. It is 1, you know that. So, this part of the code will not get executed. Whether the x part will be getting executed and the result will be the number percentage t. What is the number here? 5. So the output will be a number 5 is odd. The number 5 is odd. That should be the output. Again, suppose I make it 50. I make it 50. Okay. Now what happens? If number modulo 2 equal to equal to 0, you know when 50 is divided by 2. The remainder is 0. So, the if condition will be true. So, the output will be in that case the if condition will be true and the else condition will be false. So, the output should be the number 50 is even. Okay. So, the output should be the output should be the number 50 is even. Fine. That is all about the if else statement. I will show you the nested if statement during the practical class. That's how it works. The same logic that if we need, how it works. Okay? Just remember to close the practice. Now the next one is the fourth step. Like the if else was a um, conditional statement, the for statement is an integrative statement. Integrative statement. That means if I want to run the same block of code again and again, I will have to use the for statement. The condition of for statement is there must be a starting condition and there must be a terminating condition okay and we need an intermediate variable remember for the for statement these are the requirements you need one initial condition okay you need one terminal condition by terminal condition i mean that when will 
our program get out of the loop. Okay. So these two things are must. You need one initial condition, you need one terminal condition. And the third most requirement is that there must be one temporary variable which is I will not say temporary it is better to say intermediate variable I will explain this thing intermediate variable this is not technical term I will just make you understand that what is an intermediate variable so it is not a technical term here okay but intermediate variable is an understanding way it, it is a way of understanding that how we are actually using the intermediate variable to go through a particular loop okay so there must be one intermediate variable which is used for iteration so what are the three conditions then the first is you need one initial condition, you need one terminal condition and there must be one intermediate variable which is used for iteration. Okay? And what is the purpose? The purpose is to repeat a block of code again and again until we get the terminal condition we get the terminal condition okay. remember this fine I will show you now that how this whole for loop works I will be adding this I hope you have already noted them down suppose I want to print the string Welcome to S for Okay? I want to print this thing string 10 times. Then how will I use the for statement? Suppose I will I need to print the string welcome to S for the point. So what I will do? I will declare one internet. Okay. Now see for i equal to 0, i less than equal to 9 because I want to print it 10 times. So how it works? It starts with 0 and it will move to 9. Okay. So if we include all the values between 0 and 9, including 0, so there must be 10 values and there will be one increment condition that is i plus plus printf will come to s for verification point okay so see what will happen here? I am initializing this variable to 0. Okay. I am initializing this variable to 0. And I am iterating this value from 0 to 9. And each time within the loop, I am increasing this by 1. Okay. And so, welcome to as for the equation point will be printed. So, what will happen when i equal to 0? When i equal to 0, we will get the first welcome to s for the equation point. 
Then what will happen? I will be increased by one. Then for I equal to one, print F will come to S modulo equation point will be again printed. Likewise, it will move from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now what is the terminating condition? That I must be less than equal to 9. So when I equal to 9, at that point of time, okay, I will again be incremented as 10. Now, this particular part of the loop will not be exhibited because our terminating condition is I must be less than equal to 9. So, when that intermediate variable is equal to 10, this particular for loop will not be executed. Now, why is this variable intermediate? Because my main job is to print this particular line when it comes to S coordinate equation point. And at a given time, this variable is having a particular value. Just to get this line printed 10 times, I have used this variable as a middleman. That is why it is an intermediate variable. As such, I don't make this variable. I am just iterating this particular variable. Okay, starting from 0 to 9. So, this particular string is printed, this particular uh, string of line or this particular sentence is printed 10 times. So, what is the initial condition here? i equal to 0. What is the terminal condition here? i less than equal to 9. Okay, now we want to implement this, otherwise it will just get printed once. So, we must uh, increase this value by 1, okay? And this variable is intermediate because it doesn't have any use. We have used to iterate this. We have used this to run this loop between 0 and 9. Otherwise, this variable has no use. That is why you can call it as an intermediate variable. That is all about the for loop, the cost. Next comes the the while do and the do while. That is another conditional statement. Very interesting. So while do and do while. While do and do while. So, more or less this thing, uh, these two uh, statements are same, these two loop structures, these two conditional statements are same, only there is a particular difference. What is the difference? The difference is in case number A, that is in while loop, the condition is checked first, then the loop is executed. Okay? And what happens in do while? At least execute the loop once, then check the condition. then check the condition. That means if I want to, um, at least once I want to run the loop, okay, then I want to check the condition. In that particular case, I will use do while. And in case I want to check the condition beforehand, okay, that if it is true, then only the um, block of code will be executed, else it will not get executed, fine. So in that case, we will be using the while. But in case we want to execute the loop at least once, then you want to check the condition. In that particular case, we use the do. Okay. So, let me give you one example of why do and do why. I will just be giving you that simple block of code. Okay. Why? It's a. 
y a greater than 3 printed the number is greater than 3 suppose i want to increase i want to decrease the value of a by 1 and again i am actually what i am doing i am decrementing the loop okay decrementing the value of a from within the loop so a minus a suppose at the beginning a starts with say t a is equal to Okay, in k equal to 5. So, what happens? Why a greater than 3? That one is true. So, printed the number is greater than 3 will be printed once, but the value of a will be decremented by 1, that is 5 becomes 4. Again, in the second part, what happens? Why a is greater than 3? So, you know 4 is again greater than 3. So, this one will be printed again for the second time, the number is greater than 3. Now, Again a is decremented, so 4 becomes 3. But now this condition, y a greater than 3 is false. So, printed the number is greater than 3 will not be printed. So, how many times this particular line will be printed? Obviously, 2 times. So, 2 times the number is greater than 3 will be printed. Because my uh, variable a is initialized to 5, but within the while loop, I have decremented the value of A and as such, after two iterations, after two times checking of the condition, okay, the value is uh, becoming 3, but our condition within the while is A must be greater than 3, so the while loop is not executed. That is the thing, that is the while loop statement, okay, that is the while loop statement. Now let's come to the do while. For do while, take this example. Do a plus plus. is 4. This will be 
because a is incremented within the loop and then the value of a is percentage d a was 3 now it becomes 4 and so the value of a is 4 will be printed but next time next time when while the condition is changed because a is not less than less than 2 so next time this loop will not print so once only the value of a is 4 is displayed in your calculator that is the y don't worry, all these uh, codes will be shown to you during our practicals, okay? So, stay tuned for that and uh, follow our channel for regular updates. Fine, so, while do for if else, I have covered the three things, three most important ones. Now, the fourth one, that is also the important that I will show you now. That is the sweet statement. That is another more structure. The next one is the sweet statement. Sweet statement. This is a very important improvisation. Suppose Based on a particular value, based on a practical, um, in a particular value, say this is switch. Okay. When switch is 1, then you do and when the value of switch is 2, you do so, when switch is 3, you do multiply. That means, I want to switch between operations based on what input the user provides. Suppose I have a menu driven program. You have, uh, many, one of you, many of you have uh, come with the interactive programs where the programmer often asks the user press 1 to add, press 2 to um, find the difference, press 3 to multiply, okay. That means it is a menu driven. So when the user presses 1, then the add, add operation will be complicated. When the user presses 2, then the subtraction operation will be complicated. When the user presses 3, then the multiplication operation will be complicated. And when the user presses 4, that is say, default or any other number then it will be executing that means it will not work the program will be stopped so based on the value of this switch if it is 1 then we do add if it is 2 it is if it is doing subtraction if it is 3 it is doing multiplication and in case it is other than 1 2 or 3 then we will simply exit the switch Fine. That is the all about the switch. Now how it operates? That is very easy. Let me show you a block of code. Suppose whatever input the user is giving that is recorded in some variable choice. So in choice print f enter choice this must be within the mean no question about that then the system reads from the user ok now the, our choice is recorded by the system using this print f first the programmer asks the user to enter choice ok enter choice one comma 2 comma 3 because any one of the three choices user is going to. So after scanning that choice is recorded. Now the switch statement will be used. Switch choice. Okay. Case 1. Case 1 is sum equal to A plus B. 
different kinds of control structures so i will show you in the practical that how break and continuous technique works okay don't worry about that that's it if you have any questions you can always uh, um, type in the comment section and we will provide you full support stay tuned for another two or three days when within which we are going to actually show you the practicals okay so those videos will be far more interesting than they are today Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.